Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my shop. Um, welcome back to the show. I hope we got a good good show for you tonight. I'm going to go over some, uh, I, I didn't, you know, as most of you probably know, if you follow me on Facebook, you know, I had some jury duty and stuff this week. So I didn't even bother trying to, uh, to secure a guest. And I'm almost thinking, you know, the Q&A show seemed to do a lot better. It seems like we have a lot more interaction and stuff like that. Uh, so I may just start doing a lot more of those as well as a show and show and tell show like we did last week. Those seem to be pretty popular. Uh, so we'll probably stick to, to kind of that, that type of format. Uh, Cause there's always new people, you know, every week I'm getting people asking me questions about this or that. And, uh, so even though it may be repeated for some folks, uh, there's always somebody new that's coming along that hadn't heard it before. So we'll just uh, we'll just kind of go with that. Um, you know, I kind of throw this out there. You know, it kind of happened by accident today. I had somebody contact me, and I spent a little time with them on Facebook Messenger trying to help them out. But if anybody has got some kind of an issue. Uh, of course, I know everybody's wanting to get it fixed now and get back up and running and stuff. But, uh, you know, if um, if you've got something you want to know about, you know, whether it be how to add something, you know, say touch plate or, you know, whatever it might be, uh, you know, let me know and we can make sure we work that into the show uh, so that we're not just showing you. We're showing showing everybody. So. Javi, let's, uh, Javi's with me tonight. He's going to help me watch the chat and everything. Let's do a quick roll call. Who we got out there? Well, let's see. We've got Wizard Woodworks. We've got, uh, give me a second here and pull up this screen. Becca Butch uh, uh, Bernatus, Dan Wickware, uh, Frankie Grant Clark, Jeff Connor, Jeff Wilder, Keith Allen, uh, Kevin Calhoun, Leo Steger, uh, Mike Haichu, Raymond Dixon, Ron Godot, Trevor Carter, Wayne Hurl. Uh, from what I've seen, there's a few others there as well. Uh, Jim Horton, uh, David Vosleff, Scott Wilson is here. So uh, okay. uh, yeah, I've got a bunch. I let, I let you do the call out, of the, the roll call, so <laughs> that you can mispronounce the names instead. There you go. Because <laughs> I always butcher the names. I'm uh, I'm terrible. Next week I'll do it with uh, an Italian accent. Uh, there, you go. there you go. So uh, Scott Wilson, otherwise known as Barry, or known as Barry to me. I'm glad you're here, Barry. We're going to be doing a lot of the show talking about what you and I talked about today. So uh, trying to do, so, I'll be doing some show and tell, trying to do some screenshots and uh, showing some stuff on the machine, and uh, maybe it'll be a little clearer to you from from what we talked about earlier today. So uh, thank you all for joining, man. We're already up over 50 some folks. Um, I appreciate, appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, Javi, uh, let me go ahead and, I mean, everybody knows you, but go ahead and introduce yourself and, and give them what news uh, you've got about your show. Uh, good evening, all. My name is uh, Javi, Javier Enzueta from Javi's Woodshop. Just uh, click on the three dots to the right of whenever I say something on the chat and, uh, and uh, go to channel, and uh, you'll see my uh, my YouTube channel. Usually on Thursdays, I have uh, Learn CNC with Javi. Uh, next week will be my last Thursday, and after that, I will be uh, following Dave's show. So uh, I'll be on Saturday nights after Dave. So whenever he finishes, whether it be nine or ten, I'll I'll uh, follow him and uh, continue to uh, help you guys. Um, in any kind of issues with uh, Vectric software you might have, uh, uh, add to whatever Dave uh, is uh, is instructing. Whether it's on uh, all about steppers, about about uh, uh, limit switches, configuring Mach three, you got questions, we've got answers. Oh, and uh, last last minute thing: the useless challenge. Two more days left for the. Useless challenge. Go to my channel and check out the rules. Build something completely useless out of wood, uh, and just make a funny video and uh, 
and enter it in. I believe there's two entries so far and there's three prizes. So you're guaranteed to win if you if you're the only other one. <laughs> Dang, I, I wish I had time to do mine now. Because I know the feeling kind of jacked me up because it, it, it got me behind on everything. Not to mention while I was at jury duty. Um, it rained all week while I was gone at that. And then we had, uh, I came home from, what was it? The first night or the second night of jury duty? No, first night, I guess it was. I had a tree that had fell over and was leaning on the front of my porch. So I had to deal with that. And, uh, just a bunch of stuff's got me behind a little bit. So I've been trying to, uh, trying to get caught back up. I got a few things I want to talk about. First of all, you know, I'm wearing this awesome looking attire tonight. Uh, you know, the um, last week or the week before, I can't remember, somebody was asking me about shirts and hats and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I've got the uh, links where you can go to the store and the merch store and buy the Gatton CNC. I've got hats, shirts. Uh, coffee mugs, tumblers, shop aprons. I don't even remember what all I got on there. I got a bunch of stuff. And I also have pretty much the same thing, only in different uh, different colors for the Garage Works. Uh, so whether you're a Garage Works guy or a Gatton CNC guy, there's links if you want to go check out the merch. And, of course, I appreciate anything you you buy because, you know, I get a buck or two for it and, uh that helps to uh, helps to pay the bills. So, thank you much for that. Oh, let me see here. I made myself a list because I've got, like I said, I got a lot of stuff I want to go over tonight. Uh, let me start with. I mentioned on Facebook. This is kind of off the subject of CNC a minute, but I mentioned on Facebook. I don't know, two or three weeks ago, if there is anybody that's into melting down HDPE and upcycling it, reusing it, whatever you want to call it. I have this, this pile you see right here. This is just from one day's thing. This, I got a trash can with a, a piece of plywood sitting on it with my laptops right here in front of me. And it's slap full of this kind of stuff. So I, I, mentioned it on facebook i said if anybody wants it they can have it but they got to come get it i'm not packing it up and shipping it i mean you got to be fairly local uh, the only time the only responses i had on facebook i think were guys that you know live out of state or something if you want to drive to come get it you're welcome to it but uh i'm not going to pack it up and ship it i'll i'll find a place to recycle it around here and I've got, I mean, I got tons of this stuff because I've been cutting HDPE for years. And being the horror I am, I just kind of stash it here and there. Well, now it's time to, I got to get rid of some of it. So anybody won't see that and they live close enough, send me an email, let me know. Uh, and like I said, you can have it. All you got to do is come get it. Always have some. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Also, I know y'all going to get tired of me talking about this book, but I'm going to tell you what, this thing is really good. In fact, I'm going to reference a page because one of the things I'm going to be talking about tonight is in this book. So, Barry, I don't know if you've got this book or not, but it's a great resource for newbies and veterans alike. I mean, it's, uh, and it's all based around the, it doesn't really get into Mach 3 stuff, but it does talk a lot about the Vectric stuff. Aspire, VCAR Pro, that kind of stuff, which, you know, probably 90% of you out there use. So, again, I have a link down in the show description to get this book off Amazon. Uh, it's a great book. I, I'm probably going to keep on plugging that thing because I know there's always a bunch of new folks watching yeah, uh, Wood Bucket says, great book. Uh, a bunch of you have already bought it. So uh, Becca just got hers. Yeah. Rich says, yeah. great book. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really good. I would, you know, I highly recommend it. Like I said, I'll be plugging it all the time because it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things, you know, I am. I, if I like something, I talk about it. 
So sometimes if I don't like it, I talk about it. But that's another story. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, also, I'm currently out of stock. You know, anybody you know knows the Garage Works. If you've been looking at the Garage Works website. I'm currently out of stock on the four before, and it's probably going to be a while before I get some more. Uh, I do have some 36 by 24s in stock, and I do have, excuse me, a few of the small ones. Uh, I don't even know how many, a couple, maybe three. Uh, Leo, the, the, right now on Amazon, the link I put, I think it was $18 and something. The f price changes. From, for some reason, but it's less than 20 bucks, worth every penny. Um, but also, I have, and I don't know, you got you guys, if you've seen me do a show live from my garage, uh, or as Gatton CNC headquarters, I like to call it, uh, I have a 36 by 24 demo machine out there. It's just setting up on a wooden cart-like thing I built. Uh, it's got, uh, I mean, it's, it's a ready to run machine. It's got the Xylotex. It's got the, the touch plate, the e-stop limit switches, um, drag chain, pretty much, pretty much like this one. I've got a DeWalt 611 on there. And as happens all the time, if I build one of those things up and then it sets around, and I don't use it. I'm going to have to get rid of it. It's in the way. So I got something else I need that space for. So I will probably be making, you know, probably watch on Facebook. I will be making somebody a fantastic deal on that thing. But once again, like I did on a lot of my demos, the catch is you got to come get it because I ain't taking it apart. It's already hooked up, ready to run. Um, I don't know. I didn't even know how much I'm going to ask for it yet, but I'll be, you know, you could bet it'll be a, a sweet deal. So I thought I'd mention that. So if anybody wants to be thinking about that, talking to the wife, getting her uh, purchasing manager, whatever you want to call, <laughs> you know, be working on that. Okay. I think we covered. Most we of had a, uh, I don't know if you want to take it now or later, but we had a question about. Uh, the garage works and a spindle uh, from Matthew Van Lunen. Um, he was concerned mostly about uh, for on the gar garage works four by four. He was mostly concerned with the anti backlash nut on the Z axis being vertical. Um, uh, if it'll take the, uh, I know this has been asked a few times. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if if it'll take the weight, he's he was uh, thinking. Well, he went with a Delrin block freewheeling style. What do you think? Well, you know, I should probably just start off every show talking about this because because I've I mentioned it a hundred times, um, and, and I'm not I'm not fussing at you, Matt. Um, the the all the garage works was designed for or a, kind of built around a compact style router like a Porter Cable 450, the Dewalt 611. You know, those type of routers that are popular on the Shapeokos, the x -Carp, all that kind of stuff. Having said that, as you can see right back here, I'm running a Porter Cable 690, which is a little heavier than, uh, than a DeWalt 611 or, you know, the compact routers. Uh, and there are people, I know of at least one or two, that are running that 2.2 kilowatt, the same spindle that I'm running on the Gatton in there. Uh, and, and all I can tell you is it'll probably hold it, but if it falls off and, you know, messes up stuff, don't call me because I, you know, that's why I say it. It's not, it's not designed for that. It's designed for the compact routers. However, there are people, you know, everybody pushes the envelope and, puts it on there so if you want to uh you know you can i would post that question in the, the garage works facebook page and i'm sure uh nate well, let's see if i can say his name right nate longfellow 
Nathan Longfellow, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's the one I think that's that's got the big one yeah. on there. Uh, there, I think there's somebody else too, but I'm not for certain. There, uh, there are a couple others who have put the spindle on, and I mean, my my opinion's always been, uh, and not owning a garage works, I'll just give my my un uh, un uh, what is it? unsolicited opinion. Uh, is it wasn't meant for it. It can handle it, but don't overtax the machine because uh, you if you do do something like that, you you do want to run it light. You don't want to overtax it because again, it wasn't really designed for it. Yeah, and and let me say this too: the reason it's not designed for it is because one of the things I wanted to do was to make a good, sturdy machine, but not where it costs an arm and a leg. So you know, the the X car was popular at the time when I started designing this. Uh, you know, they were giving those things out left and right. Uh, they started out with that little dinky spindle and then they went to the, uh, DeWalt 611. Um, you know, a lot, a lot, you know, the, um, shark, uh, what is it? Uh, the, the Rockler next wave automation shark and those type things run either a Bosch or, you know, a smaller type thing. So that's kind of the, what I was going after, uh, you know, like I said, I don't have any worries at all with a 690. It'll run that fine. I know a lot of people are running a full-size router on there. Um, it's just if I'd have known everybody was going to try to hang 25, 30 pounds off the front of it, I would have designed it beefier, but then it would have cost more, you know, because, you know, there's a big difference in, you know, the, the thicker gauge steel you go to, the more it costs, so. Uh, I was trying to make things, you know, a good machine that's affordable, a DIY kit where people can buy it kind of like they do the GAT and you buy it and you can buy the stepper motors later or, you know, the lead screw. You know, you can do all of it when you have the money and not have to buy everything up front. So, uh, okay. Yeah, he was also asking uh, if the Delrin style block is okay as a lead nut. I kind of didn't understand the question. Well, is it a block or a nut? I mean, uh, if is he talking you, about a uh, a Delrin block that about, uh, that's tapped? The, uh, are you talking? You know, are you talking about the dumpster CNC because that's what it's made out of is Delrin, and yeah. it should be fine. I mean, you know. Like I said, just you're just gonna have to be careful because if you if you miscalculate something, forget to set your change your uh, tool height or something, and that thing goes plowing in, it's gonna bend something up. If you got one of those big heavy, yeah. you know. Yeah, he was he was saying it's a, a tapped block. Okay. Uh, um, that could work, that, but it might it might create too much drag on it. I think I would think. Well, the problem with just a tap block is. You know, you don't have any way to to take the the backlash out. The backlash. Yeah. You know, the way the the dumpster CNC things are made is there's a spring on there, so it's constantly hugging that lead screw. Uh, yeah. If it's just a tap block, that Delrin wears, and it, you know, the more you use it, the more it's going to get sloppy. So, I mean, it's going to last a long time. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, there's nothing to constantly keep. You know, that thing hugging around that, that lead screw. You want to get to Scott's question or you want another one uh, thrown in beforehand? Well, yeah, let's hold yeah, let's hold off on the questions here. You got uh, it. because like I said, I wanna I wanna help out uh, Barry, but I also want to show I'm gonna give you my first Dave's tip of the day. And this may be something, you know, some of y'all might already know this, but a lot of you may not, and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's worth talking about. It won't take me but a second, but I've noticed, uh, you know, for for you guys that that have a machine, let's say you got a Gatton or a Garage Works or you know whatever it is, J Poco, what, whatever it might be. You you know if that's the only machine you have and you're using V Car Pro or Aspire or one of the vectric products to program it. 
this may not be that big a deal for you if you've just got that one machine because you've probably got when you go to post you've got your post processor set and like most folks you'll never never touch it again uh, but i have noticed that there are uh, I've had several people within the past couple weeks ask me for the post processor file that I use for my laser. So I've sent that to several people. Uh, I, I know Jerry Brown at, uh, I think at the Houston show, he bought one of the small digital wood carver machines. He's going to run that alongside his Gatton. So he will have two different posts. So what I'm going to show you, and like I said, y'all, a lot of y'all may already know about this, but if you don't, this is something kind of, kind of handy, I think. So let me screen share right quick. Oh, wait a minute. I just clicked on the wrong thing. I'll be sorry. I presented you instead of clicking to me so it won't go off while I'm trying to screen share. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. I don't know why I'm using that. I put a mouse up here. Okay, so I'm going to open up my VCar Pro right here. I should have already had it open. It runs kind of slow here with all this going on. Okay, and I'm just going to pick whatever. This was a little... Oh, come on. Where'd it go? Well, I'll just pick another file then. Um, and we'll just pick this. This is a little cam thing that I drew up that I used to hold the, the table down. But anyway, oh, I guess I'm going to have to put toolpath on it too. Well, I'm just going to do one thing here. I'll just put a... Okay. So now let's say we wanted to save that. Well, here's what I'm talking about. The way it goes, like, if you only have one machine, and I'm assuming y'all can see my screen, right, Javi? You can see it okay? Yep. See it perfectly fine, Dave. Okay. So, like I said, if you just got one machine, you select your post-processor, you're probably never going to change it again. So you're probably not going to worry about doing what I'm about to show you. But you notice if you have more than one machine, there are a ton of post processors in here. And I use two of them because I use the, the, the mock, this one here that I'm on, the Mach 3, 2, 3 axis or arcs, inches text. I use that for routing and then i also use the one that i made for the laser so if you're going back and forth and trying to program you know it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to go find those but what you can do is you can come over here to the file and click on this open application data folder and there you see we're inside vcar pro and if i go to the post p folder there is all of those post processors that we were just looking at okay and out of all these and i don't know how many there are i'm not going to take the time to count them it says there's 463 items over there so you know there's a few folders at the top but most of that's uh post processors i guess but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to go down here and scroll down and find, first let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay, right here, this one that says JTEC Laser 2.8. That's the one that I use for my laser. And now I'm going to scroll down and find the one right here. And I'm going to hold Control so that I can highlight both of those. And I'll just make sure, yep, that one's still highlighted. So now I'm gonna come over here and right click and hit copy. And then I'm gonna come back up here and go up one level. 
and I'm going to go put those in the folder my post P and you can leave that readme file in there that won't hurt anything now I'm going to paste those two uh, post processors these are really the only two that I use and now I can close this out and now when I come back to this uh, let's see let me say this I don't have to so let me exit out of this so now when I open up vcar pro and I come over here to save this now the only two that are in there or the two because what happens is if you have anything at all if you have a, a post processor file in that my post folder that's what it will open first if you don't have anything in there by default it, get, it gets just the post p folder well then you have 40 11 of them in there so that's kind of a neat little trick and the reason i'm bringing it up is because i know a lot of folks are getting to the point where they've got more than one machine, but they're not necessarily the same type of machine. Uh, you know, a lot of folks are adding uh, lasers to them and things like that. So that's, uh, that's kind of a handy little deal. I, I really like doing that because that way I only have to switch, you know, when I'm going from laser to router, it's just boom, boom. It's right there. So before I get, turn off the screen share, does anybody uh, have any questions about that? That was really that's an great. excellent tip, Dave. That that was well, you know, it's I hadn't really thought about it because, you know, I, I'm so stupid sometimes. Sometimes I'll do something the hard way forever, and then I'll go, well, you know what? I ought to just take a minute and figure out how to do it a different way. Or apparently we're in the same boat because I'm right now I'm actually going to my Aspire and removing everything except the ones that I normally use because uh, well see that's uh, that's the other there's thing. no point in having a bunch of them I mean well, I could see, save I them would, I wouldn't remove them Javi you see that by no no I, I save them in a in a backup folder somewhere but uh, just well I mean you uh, don't you don't really even have to do that you can leave them in the the post processor folder and just right. move the ones you want into the my post processor. And then that's what will open up by default from then right, on. Right, exactly. Yeah, precisely. So, okay. You know, because I, I would never want to delete, although there's, you know, a million to one chance I'm going to use some of those things. But, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, they have them in there for everything. But you never know. And um, so it's good to, you know, but this is just a really easy fix. So there you have it. There's Dave's tip number one for tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll get off of here and get stop the screen sharing. I just thought, like I said, I've had several folks ask about that laser profile. And I thought, well, now's the perfect time to show that tip because where's my, uh, there we go. Because, you know, the, it's, it's going to be a different post. So, okay. Now let's talk about, some of the things that I was talking with Barry today. So Barry, I hope you're still watching. And by the way, Leo, I hope you've set your alarm for later tonight. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just poking fun at you, Leo. Uh, let's see. All right. So Barry contacted me today and he was having some issues with his settings in Mach 3. Uh, I'm even going to go back to that conversation so I can try to get it here. Um, yeah, he had some stuff running backwards when he, I guess when he was trying to reference home. Uh, yeah, let me know. That's right. I think Barry, isn't it? You, when you referenced home, things were moving the wrong direction or something like that. Um, and so anyway, so I asked him to send me a, a picture of his, uh, uh, well, let's see. First I asked for the, 
back up here make sure i'm telling the story right well at first when at first when he started saying stuff was going backwards i thought he meant that when he jogged like say the jog the x to go to the right it was going left but i don't think that's what he was talking about i think he was what he was talking about was it was going wrong yeah. way when he tried to reference all home because he does have limit switches one on each end you know, like he said on the z he's got one top and bottom the yep. x he's got one left and right and the y he's got one front and back he said this <laughs> Barry said, just yeah. tell everyone it was all jacked up. All okay, jacked up. Well, we're going to try to unjack it. We're going to try to unjack yeah. it here, Barry. Yep. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to try to do another screenshot because I don't, I've got it up over here, but I don't really think you can see it. And I think uh, we'll try this and see if it works real quick. Um, I'm not even sure what I've got on this. Um, there it is. I, I can't hardly tell what I'm looking at on this screen. So I'm going to load my Mach 3 or open it up, and we'll we'll try to go through the motions on here. I think I've got close to the same settings you might have. You're talking about setting the limits and the directions for the uh, for the homing. Yeah, and and like I said, uh, Barry, let me see if I can find where he said it here. Uh, let's see. Okay, here here's here's his comment. He says originally V carve in general because I was asking what he was having a problem with. He says, however, I watched a few vids from another one of our forum members about homing slash limit switches. And now the machine is all messed up. I do not know my original settings in Mach 3 to change them back, which I think were yours to begin with. When I click reference all home to test the Z moves down instead of up and the Y motors moved in the opposite direction, causing the gantry to rack. Okay, so Let's uh, let's pick something here. Let's see, Gat and CNC. I guess that'll work. Uh, but first of all, you have to make sure. And again, I know some of this stuff is going to be, uh, you know, for you guys over there in the chat that are that are veterans. This is going to be, you know, maybe some pretty boring stuff. But. If it is, you know, go ahead and turn this off and go back and watch American Idol or whatever. <laughs> uh, but we're going to try to get through this and chat. So originally I had him uh, go to this config input signals and I had him send me. Oh, I don't have anything set up in here. That's OK. Uh, had him send me uh, this and he had, uh, you know, he had all this enabled the home plus plus minus minus. Uh, I think he used ports 11, 12, and 13, if I believe. 11 for the X, 12 for the Y, and 13 for the Z. Uh, so that was okay. And then I said, okay, well, send me a picture of your homing limits page. And where it was messed up is he had checks here. And I'm assuming Barry, and you can correct me, I'm because I, I'm get, I'm guessing here. I'm assuming when you reference home, you want it to come to the lower left-hand corner. Is that correct? I'll give him a minute. Yeah, because there are two options. You can, uh, well, there are multiple options, but most people either go lower left or upper right. Yeah, yeah, and. Okay, he says, yes, sir. Okay, well, what he had is he had checks in here, which if I scoot this over where you can see what this is, this means home negative. So if you have a green check in there and you hit reference all home, it's going to take off towards the back of your machine. And also, if you have it in the Z, it's going to go down instead of up. So I don't know what video we was watching or whatever, but apparently it got him all confused. Um about this but I, 
I'm hoping we're getting him straightened out now because after I taught him to change those, I think it was at least back to where it was before he got jacked up. But now, uh, now Barry, let me ask you this. I'm still going to go on with your, your, uh, the file you sent me, but your machine will jog correctly now, correct? You know, when you, it's all going the right way, Z up and down the correct way and Y back and forth the right way. And hey, we got these lags. We'll have to. Yep. Yeah. We'll just fill in some time. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, were you going to talk about, uh, also the, um, uh the soft limits dave or you're not going to no, get into that no, at the moment? i wasn't i wasn't going to try to touch on the soft limits just yet uh yeah. but he says yeah so so everything is jogging right but i think he was having a little uh problem uh, understanding and let's see what did i do i'm trying to i always have the file well maybe i no i think i do have it on here all right, this machine is not set up, or this uh, Mach 3 I've got here is not set up correctly. But let me go to desktop. I think we can we can talk Barry through this just by doing this right here. Okay, here's the file he sent me. And you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to cut out some cam lobes or whatever you want to call those for his uh to hold his table down and right. uh so what was happening is he said that when he i guess when he references all home let me go back and read his comments here so i don't have to ask him to uh no, he said uh, the last comment he made was uh, it was fine. Yeah, that that was the jogging, he, but he was agreeing at uh, agreeing to both. Okay, so so we got that. Okay, I'm back to I'm back up to speed here. So where we got that straightened out? Uh, he says now he says it starts to cut off the material. Okay, now Barry, this is what I think you might be doing. Now on this particular Mach three that I have up here because it's not set up. You know, it's not connected to a machine, so I don't have any limit switches set up. So whenever you're running your machine and you don't have limit switches set up, we're just going to pretend for a moment that where all those zeros are, it's at the lower left-hand corner of the machine. You've referenced it home. These, the only difference would be is these would all be green because they've hit the, uh, the homing switch and turned that green. Okay, and now you want to jog, let's say you want to jog up a little bit, and you want to go, man, this thing is really slow, <laughs> trying to do it, let's see if I can move them both at once, okay, yeah, maybe that's enough for you to see the difference. Okay, so now if you're looking, Barry, if you're looking at your uh, over here where this screen is, you can see that I, I moved it. So if this is where the, the corner of your lower left of where your workpiece is, not where it referenced home, but where your workpiece is, you have to tell it that that's the zero. And in your case, again, these would already be green because you have referenced at home. But you would have to come up here and hit this, this, and notice how over here, this now moved back to that lower left-hand corner. And then you would run your either your touch plate or touch off on the material with a piece of paper, or however you zero your Z, and then it would be. Since I don't have limit switches connected to this thing, or it's not even connected to a machine, this is basically what, what – it would look like when you get done doing that and notice that well no it didn't really because it would be more like this so 
So this one, this, so you'd have your machine coordinates would be different than your work coordinates. Now, a lot of people have, especially newbies, have trouble understanding that. The machine coordinates, when you reference it all home, wherever you tell it to go home, if you, especially if it's the lower left, that's probably going to be zero. But if you put something right in the middle of your table, say at 15, 15, X 15, Y 15, you have to come over here and zero these out before you start your program. Otherwise, it's going to take off and cut somewhere else. Now I can show you on my machine. I can't do it with a screen share, but we can, I can turn the camera back around and show you on the machine uh, what I'm talking about. But if I hit cycle start, this thing should at least simulate it correctly. But I think, I think that's the step you're missing, Barry. I think you're referencing it all home to zero the machine out. But when you move it to the place you want to start, I think you're missing the step of hitting the zero X, zero Y, and then setting your tool height on your, or maybe you are setting your Z. I don't know. But that would explain why when you go to hit cycle start, it takes off and goes somewhere else. So I'm going to shut this off and I'll turn this, uh, turn this screen sharing off here. Is there any other questions about that by chance? Not about this. Uh, we've okay. still got a couple well, of other me, questions uh, completely on a different subject. Just uh, let me move this stuff out of the way. And like I said, you y'all can see my machine. Now, again, my machine is different because I have my, my zero zeros in the upper right-hand corner. I like when I get done with the job. All I got to do is hit reference all home. And while I'm undoing the thing and vacuuming up or whatever, that thing's moving back there out of the way. And I like, I, cause I, a lot of times I use this as a kind of an assembly table, as I'm sure most of you guys do. So, uh, you know, I like to keep it open and everything all the way to the back. So I've got this already fired up. I've got your same program that I just had uh, in there. So let me turn this on. All right, now I know you can't see my screen over here, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Here you can hear, I hit reference all home, and I have a green around the box, the zero X, zero Y, zero Z, and even the zero four. So like I said, you, I don't think you can see it. I can try to turn it a little bit, but. Yeah, you can't see it. Anyway, these all are green. So that means the machine is referenced. So now, and again, I've already got your uh, thing. We're just going to, I'm going to set this book right out here. And we're going to pretend that's your workpiece. And if I can get this thing. Oh, I just messed up. Restart it. It's been set here so long. I didn't want to do right. <laughs> Drew Oxford's in Central Time, and he's all mixed up with the, with the. He's saying it's weird to see the show on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got this. I'm going to break it down a little bit. Okay, so you can probably see now I've got this bit. Of course, I'm going to leave it up in the air. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull that bit out of there just in case. Because I don't want to go plowing through that book. So I'll just take the bit out. Okay. So now if, now if you move it to your workpiece, and again, it could be anywhere, but it's somewhere off of where your machine zero is, where it references home. Now once you get it on that lower left-hand corner, which is the way you have this program, and now i got to bring that program back in. 
Okay, now, even though these have green lights or it's lit up green around because it's referenced home, it's still not, I haven't set an origin for the workpiece. So I have to come back with the mouse and just click the zero X and that will turn to zero in the DRO, zero the Y. And I'm going to pretend that I've set the Z and I've zeroed that. Now I've got your program. The and the one way you can always tell is when you look in this um, little um, I don't know what you call this little screen here that shows the the program the parts. It should be where you know if you programmed it to go off the lower left hand corner, that's what you should be seeing. You should be seeing that crosshairs at the lower left hand corner. So there you go. Okay, so now you should be able to tell, like I said, it's just gonna cut air. Now it's going and it's staying above that book. It's not going off and cutting cutting off somewhere. Of course it will eventually because your program's bigger than what that book is. But all right, Barry, let's uh, leave me a comment over there in the chat. If uh... there was a question, Keith had a question on uh, on the Z axis. Uh, he's asking uh, he's asking a couple questions, whether whether you use the top or the bottom. And uh, and also, if Z is set to the top of the material, you'll always be cutting in the negative Z uh, and. Uh, well, that, that's somewhat, well, I'll take the first part of that question. Do you want to handle the last part, Dave? Well, um, Barry only, yeah. just, just so you know, Barry only sent me the, the text file. He didn't send me the VCAR file. But I can tell but just by looking at the G code that he must be setting it at the top of the material because the first cut was minus 1 to point one two five. Yeah, this, this is a question from Keith Allen. Um, he... Um, he was asking which do you use keith it really depends on the project because if uh there are times where i have a rough board and i will set z at the bottom just to plane the board uh because the bottom i know is is a is a static uh piece where if i have a rough board you you have uh you, you can't set it at any arbitrary pre piece in the top uh unless you set it to the lowest part if you know what that is of the board so you can plane it out uh if you're doing something that requires you to cut all the way through like a profile cut i would recommend going uh setting it to the top of the spoil board or the bottom of the piece that way when you go to zero you're always scraping the the, the bottom of the spoil board you're not dependent on the thickness of the board whereas if you're cutting a sign or something where you need to uh, work with the top layer and just scrape a little bit off the top or whatever, then you set it to the top of the spoil board. It really depends on the project. As far as whether it's positive or negative, uh, well, Dave, you want to answer that? It gets to be confusing sometimes for, for newbies. Well we talked about that on one of the earlier shows and, and Keith, if you'd like to see a, a live demonstration, we're getting close to nine o'clock here. So I don't want to, I don't want to try to tackle all that tonight, but I'd be happy to do a demonstration. I just, the way I do things and you know, that doesn't mean it's the right way. <laughs> There's plenty of people out there to tell you it's the wrong way uh, actually, but I pretty much go off the top on everything. But I have a reason for that. You'll you'll notice I have this nice pretty MDF here on my table, and I got my T tracks. That they, everybody else calls this the spoil board, and technically it is a spoil board. Only I never spoil it because I always uh, let's see if I can find something. Remember Dave, how Dave's I mentioned like, I, have lot, I have a lot yeah. of HDPE. I usually stick something like this or maybe a piece of MDF or maybe a piece of plywood 
And that way, like this is half inch HDPE. I've got a ton of this stuff. I mean a ton of it. It's nice and true. It's always, when you mic it, it's always half inch thick. So it, you know, keeps everything level. So what I do, if I like this is quarter inch material. Now let's say I got a piece on here and I clamp this down to this other half inch. I always program my final pass to go like 0.28, which is like 30 thousandths path. Well, a lot of people think, oh man, you don't need to go that much. Well, you know, you don't, you know, if you go that much, you know, it's always going to cut through. It's always going to just cut into this. It's never going to cut into this. And I've been doing that since day one, since I built my first CNC. Uh, I've always had plenty of scrap around, just like you probably always have plenty of scrap around. Some people, for some reason, they like, they put this on here. They like to mess it up and then redo it. I never do that. I do it one time and I'm done. Yep. So no matter what type of tabletop I have, whether it's T-Track like this or on my Gatton, I have a uh, plywood top with T-nuts underneath that I used to climb. But I always put something underneath and cut into that. That way I'm not messing up my table. Yep. And you always go a little past the, uh, you, you have the leeway of going past the thickness. So that way you, you always got that buffer zone, which is, which is nice. So the way, the way well, Dave. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a good it. point because there's been times, uh, believe it or not, there's been times that I've made mistakes and mostly putting the decimal point in the wrong place or something. And if I hadn't had that extra piece under there, I would have really jammed something down in there, but you can always kind of save it because even if it goes farther than you want it to, it's still not, cutting anything it's going to hurt it so yeah and I'm, in and in uh, reference to your other question about positive z and negative z well let me let me explain simply how it works when you set z to the to the to the to the spoil board or the bottom of the of the piece your z is set to zero and your g code will compensate or rather vectric will compensate the g code based on the thickness. So let's say you have a three quarter inch piece and your Z is set to, to the, the bottom, then you will be starting at uh, plus 75 plus 0.75 Z and cutting down to zero. If you set uh, Z at the top where Z is zero at the top, well then Z is uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. The first one was was rough. If uh, if you set Z at zero, G code will compensate for the first scenario. Uh, the spoil board, it will start at negative 0.75, but it will cut in a positive direction. So it will cut from negative 0.75 to zero. Whereas if you set Z equals zero uh, on the top of the spoil board, it'll cut from zero to your thickness of the board or 0.75 in the case of a three quarter inch ply so so it will not cut in the negative direction but it will cut in the negative part of the axes if <laughs> in one case if you want to look at it that way it'll always be adding numbers it just depends on whether it starts at in the case of z equals zero it'll start at negative 0.75 or in the case of z equals zero up here it'll start at zero and go down to 0.75 positive yeah I, I tell you, Javi, I really hate to talk about that too much because when you're just doing yeah, this, it's I know. you almost have to see it. And like I said, if, if you want to see me set something up, let me know ahead of time uh, and I'll set it up on the show and have it ready. And yeah. I'll show you what the difference is. We can have it where it looks at the screen. Maybe I'll even run the machine off my laptop so I can screen share. And you can see the Mach 3 screen and I'll run it where the camera's pointing at the machine. You know, it makes a whole lot more sense when you see it actually done. Absolutely. Uh, somebody Absolutely. Uh, Frankie says, Peter, yeah, Peter Pasuelo has some good videos on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Peter's got a lot of excellent videos on that. Somebody was suffice, saying, to, suffice to say that that Mach 3 will figure it out for you. You just have to make sure you know the thickness of the wood. And, uh, and, and on the program, if you start at the top, zero the machine at the top. If you start at the bottom, zero the machine at the bottom. It's 
uh, the rest is is all taken care of by the program. Yeah, yeah. I, I know somebody said that, like, said I have a spoil board for my spoil board. <laughs> um, That's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I said, I see guys all the time that that put this on there, and then when you say something about it, they're like, "Oh, well, it's cheap. It's just MDF." And I'm like, "Yeah, but what can be cheaper is if you only do it once." You know, like I said, everybody does their own thing. I don't care. I I got lots of drop. I've always got some MDF. MDF is another perfect thing to use to put underneath it because uh, that's the same. Yeah, thing. I'll say that. I'll say. I'll say this: If you're a newbie, uh, Dave's method is definitely uh, the best way to do it because uh, when I first started with CNC, I've I dug a few holes and I made a few uh, mistakes after knowing my machine as well as I do, and uh, uh, I've. Now I'm I'm at the point where I'll take off maybe a thousandth of an inch or five hundredth of an inch because of a bad measurement, uh, not because of any critical error. And uh, I'll I'll resurface the spoil board once every four or five months. That's a lot of that's a a couple of years before I need to replace yeah. the spoil board. Well, just yeah. you know, just for the record, anybody that that has been watching this show for at least a, a good while remember that when i first started doing this show back out in the shop this wasn't even the, the machine i had back here i had my old gray metal sidewinder thing and that had a solid uh, actually it had a double layer of mdf with t-tracks and there was not a mark on that mdf yeah. And that machine has been out here for 10 years. Yeah. So speak, speaking of which works, I don't care what they say. It works. It speaking of which, Jim Horton, something. Jim Horton was saying uh, earlier, he says, call me crazy, but I, I, uh, I like that Dave is out in his shed, like his old YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, believe it or not, you're going to see some, uh, you know, I don't know how many y'all are subscribed to me, uh, or not, but, uh, you're going to see some videos coming up here pretty quick and it'll be something different for sure uh okay i want to i don't want to get we got off track here a little bit but i want to go back to what we were talking about with barry's uh thing and i want to make a these are two more of dave's tips you can get your pencil and jot these down folks two more of Dave's tip of the day uh we all know that you know between the facebook groups and the and the forum and everything we have just a fantastic community of people that are always willing to help uh usually you post a question on facebook there's you know two or three sometimes a half a dozen folks have already answered it before i even see it uh, so we have a great community of folks that are willing to help but having said that make sure when somebody's offering to help you that they know what the heck they're doing. And I, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It could be that they're just genuinely, genuinely trying to help, but they've got something that's totally different from you. So, yep. you know, when they start asking you what your setup is, say, yeah, okay, now you tell me what your setup is. Cause if they, or maybe they don't even have a CNC. Well, they run one at work or something. Forget it. You just say, okay, let me go. Because like I said, I know they're trying to help, but they may end up getting your stuff all jacked up because they don't know what, you know, what your settings need to be. They, Cause if they don't have one, just like you do, uh, you know, they, they could inadvertently steer you in the wrong direction. So okay. that's Dave's tip number two or whatever. Two. Don't assume <laughs> that the person who's trying to help you knows what the heck they're doing. <laughs> uh, Okay, uh, Dave's number three tip of the day, and we've already touched on this. Uh, and Barry, I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. Once you get your machine ironed out, and you got your you got your limit switches, your homing switches, you got all that stuff is working exactly the way it's supposed to work. Take some screenshots. If you don't know how to take a screenshot, take your phone and open up each Mach 3 screen and take a picture and go print them out somewhere. Record your stuff. It's unbelievable to me the people that have 
you know, been running for two years and their, their computer finally bit the dust. So they have to get a new computer, reinstall Mach 3, and they don't have any idea what their settings are. It's really simple, folks. Yeah, Scott says, or Barry said, lesson learned. Uh, that is number one thing. And, and, and it's kind of on the same vein here. I'm going to tell you another tip. This is, this is the bonus tip of the night. When you're troubleshooting something, and, it, and this is just common sense, folks. It's, you don't have to be a mechanical genius to figure this out. It's just common sense is all it is. When you're troubleshooting something, you change one thing. <laughs> one. One thing. That's all you change. You test it. If it doesn't work, you go back and you change that one thing back to what it was because you, you didn't get the result you were looking for. Then you go change something else. Then you test that and you go back. I hear people that, again, you know, you get confused and you change stuff and you think you're going to remember what all this was. You've changed four or five things. Next thing you know, you got a cluster and you don't have screenshots and you don't know what to do. Like I keep, you know, anybody that's watched me throughout the years have probably heard me say this a million times. This is not rocket science. You common sense will get you through. You don't have to be that smart. I mean, look at me. <laughs> I prove of that. Uh, you just got to have a little common sense. Uh, you know, back before, you know, I was before I got into where I was doing the, you know, computer aided design and, and, uh, you know, working in an office and stuff like that. I worked out in a shop running different kinds of equipment, CNC, some of it CNC equipment. I've run, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of a Salvadini machine. It's an Italian machine. It's a, they had an S4 punching cell and a P4 bending cell. That whole machine was about 160 feet long. And guess what? Something went wrong with it. Guess where the technicians were? They were in Italy. So I learned real quick stuff I never thought I would learn. But one of the most important things I learned is change one thing at a time, test that out. And if that doesn't, if it doesn't do anything or it does the wrong thing, change it back right now and then move on to something else. So there you have it, folks. I'll give you four tips. I hope, hope y'all hope y'all got them. Yeah. So Bobby, you got any you got any uh thing you want to add to that? Uh no, nope. That's uh that's that about sums it up. Uh, I've got I hope a, all enjoyed oh. the, the uh, post-processor tip. I know there's a lot of you out there that, uh, you know, have got more than one machine that not necessarily the same type of machine. So that, that should. Uh... Okay. Leo says with Mach 3, can you save the profile? That's the other thing. Okay. I'm going to give you tip five. Here we go again. You just made me think of something else, Leo. <laughs> yep. Another tip is the, the profile that you set up, and I know you can't see this, but when I go over here and open up, you notice I opened up that Mach 3 loader. Uh, well, I can do it. Let me do it real quick on a screenshot here again. Let me just do a little screenshot, uh, Sharon. So I'll be getting good. I don't know why I keep doing that. I keep forgetting I got this mouse down here. Okay, so notice I I always use this Mach 3 loader. And it always comes up with this. So here are my machine profiles. Of course, some of these are the default ones that Mach 3 comes with, the mill, the Mach 3 turn, and the plasma. And then these two are ones I happen to have on this laptop. Some of the some of the the computer I have in my garage, I have four or five different profiles. But every time you create a profile there will be a, and let's see if I can go find it. Uh, where am I at? Mach 3. Oh, let's see here. Let's put it by name. Well, I guess it was by name.
Okay, here's the laser one. See how it says .xml? That is the file that has all the profile information. So once you create profiles, you should not only take your screenshots, like I just mentioned earlier, but it's always a good idea, too, to come over here and grab that file. And, you know, I see I had two of them in here. Here's the other one, the Gatton. Oops. This one here. So if I were to grab those and go put them someplace safe, not necessarily on the same computer, put them on a, an external hard drive, <clears throat> external hard drive or, you know, thumb drive or someplace, back make two or three copies. That way, if anything crashes, you can go grab that file, put it in the main Mach 3 directory, fire it up, and you'll be good to go. All those settings will be saved. You don't have to go back through and set anything up. That's actually better than saving the screenshots, actually. Um, but you should have the screenshots, too, just in case. And I guess I might as well mention this, too, although I, I've said it so many times. Um, what am I doing here? Oh. Um, What what you should do? Well, now I forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say, Javi? Uh, I I don't know. I was thinking of Keith's question. Keith was asking what a profile is. Okay, a pro. When you install Mach three, we got we got to do this pretty quick because we're running we're running out of time yeah. here. Uh, Javi's show will be starting any minute now. Oh, well, wait, not no, till May. Wait a minute. Not Never till May twelfth. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> When you, when you install Mach 3, you're going to have probably those three profiles I showed, the Mach 3 mil, the Mach 3, uh, 3 turn, and the, the plasma. Those are, I think, the default ones that that uh, come with Mach 3. But when you're setting up a thing, and a lot of people will open up that Mach 3 mil and change those settings, and, you know, like say they build a Gatton and they open that up, and that's okay, but I really don't recommend that. You might as well learn how to create a machine profile. And in fact, let's see, what time is it? Eh, where machine, are you? Ma machine profiles, just to throw something in, Dave, machine profiles contain items like how many turns per inch the screw is or, or which axes you're using or uh, yeah, which it, direction uh, uh, to go. All, all those little things, uh, whether you're using a lathe that uses three axes or a, or a CNC that uses four or a, or a laser that needs more uh, switches uh, in your breakout board, all those different configurations, including yeah. different configurations for different controllers, all that's contained in the profile. Let's say, okay, now here's, here's my uh, thing. And you can see, like I said, these bottom three, or the default that come with that. These other two are ones that I've created. Well, let's say I built a garage work CNC, just like the one behind me here. All right. I know that the Gatton CNC is very similar. So I can create a profile, click that, and then I can come over here and I can say, well, it's really very similar to the Gatton CNC. So I want it to clone from that uh, profile. So I would just put in am I spelling it right? I can't even see without my glasses. Okay, I'm just going to put Garage Works in there and I'm going to leave that unchecked because I wanted to clone. In other words, it's going to make an, a copy of the Gatton CNC, only now it's going to call it Garage Works. So I click OK, and now you see I have that up there. So now I would come to here and I'd say, OK, open it up. And then what I would do is basically I've got the exact same settings for this. And here you can always tell which profile you're running. That's the other thing, too. You want to make sure you, you're you running the right profile because some people will don't pay attention they click on something and, and it's not the right profile. And then all of a sudden they're going, why isn't this thing working? Well, you didn't load the right profile. Uh, so this is garage works. 
So now what I've done is I've got a copy basically of the Gatton CNC, and then I would come in here and make whatever subtle changes I needed that are differences between the two, and then I would save the settings, and then I would have two different profiles. So let's say I was using soft limits, and I had those set for the Gatton CNC, which is a lot bigger than the Garage Works. Well, then when I come to the Garage Works, I could just change those soft limits, make them smaller to work with the Garage Works, save the settings, and now I have two different profiles. So that's how the profiles work. It's really, really easy. I, I, I would encourage anybody, even if you only have one machine, go ahead and set up a profile for that machine and leave that default one alone. You know, clone, when you start Absolutely. off, you would clone from the Mach 3 mill, call it whatever, Gatton Garage Works, you know, Billy Bob, whatever you want to call it, change the settings, save the settings, and then that way you, you the default one is left alone. Yeah, and Dave has different profiles on his computer because sometimes he takes his laptop and he connects his garage works one day, or he'll connect his laser on his garage works, or he'll connect his CNC, and each one has a different profile because they have a different configuration or different limits uh, or such. Now, if you just have the one machine, I still we we still would rec would uh, encourage you not only to create the profile for that machine, but uh, you may want to, you only need one profile if you have one configuration, one machine with using the same router and, and the same limits and everything. But uh, you may want to set different profiles for soft limits for different projects, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so really, although you may only need one, it would be nice to have two or three different options, even for the one machine. Yeah. And, and it doesn't hurt to learn how to do it anyway. It's, you saw how I did it. It takes like two minutes to do. It's really simple. Uh, actually, the machine, uh, or not the machine, the computer that I have in the garage in there. I have one little big tiny desktop that I got from Michael Chipser. Uh, and I have a big 15-foot cable. And then I also have my UC100. Well, at one time, right now, I've only got two machines out there, but at one time, I had three machines out there. I had a, a, the real small garage works. I had the laser on it. I had the 36 by 24 garage works, and I had the DeWalt 611 on it. And then, of course, I had the Gatton. Well, all of those machines, even the, the laser one, it was on like a roll-around cart, so I could roll it close enough to, to make the plug with the UC100. So... I would plug in whichever one I'm wanting and then I would just open up Mach 3 and load the, the correct profile and I'd use that same computer for all three machines. Now, of course, I'm not running them at the same time, but, you know, most people don't. Now, if I did need to, you know, there have been times when I wanted to run something at the same time, then I just pull my laptop. That's why I've got, I've got two laptops here. I've got another one in the house that I recently bought from Michael Chipster. I've got a desktop here I bought from him. I got a desktop in there. I, bought from him. I got all kinds of computers and all of them have multiple machine profiles on them. I've still, this yeah. one right here, I've still got the, uh, I think, yeah, I've still got the Sidewinder profile on here. The one, the machine that I took apart. So, <laughs> and big bear had a question at the beginning of the show. I just didn't want him to think that I missed it. Uh, He's having an issue with rotary axis that is moves with keys, but after he makes the program in VCarve, the laser burns straight line rotary, not and the rotary's not turning. It sounds like either uh, a programming issue or uh, possibly a, uh, um, I, I mean, it, it could be uh, well if if it moves with the ar with the arrow keys, then it's not likely to be a uh, a mechanical issue. So yeah, it well, just, it's... you also need to make sure you have the uh, go to the general config page in Mach 3. And normally by default, uh, well, it may already be checked. I don't know. But you need to check because if you've been using that machine profile and A is linear, you need to go back and, you know, make sure that there's a check in there to tell it to make. 
the A axis it rotary. angular. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if it's not, it may move when you turn the thing, but when you, you know, it's, you know, when it's getting the command in the program, it may not know what to do. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, Trevor was asking if you ever did anything with those driver steppers from China. And also, what did you do with that X carve? I don't know if that's a, a um, uh, last time he. Yeah, I, yeah, I've done the, uh, where you been, Trevor? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think about a year ago, you know, I've still got back. those drivers and the, the stepper motors were okay. The drivers were crap. I ended up, you know, I bought a four axis kit from a company. I'm not even going to mention their name because I don't want nobody to go look them up and try to buy anything from them. <laughs> uh, and four, the, out of the, it was a four axis kit and out of the four drivers, one did not work at all when I got it. Wouldn't even light up. Wouldn't do anything. And the, another one was bad. And it drove me crazy because I was hooking it up to the Masso. So everything was new. And I'm sitting here thinking there's something wrong I'm doing. And the whole time, you know, I finally thought, well, let me switch it out. And I switched it out. And then that worked. And uh, the other axis where I moved it. Switched. So I thought, well, that, that's the problem. So I ended up buying two different drivers from Steppers Online, which is a good source for those. So I've got kind of a hodgepodge on that piece of plywood with the Masso. And I'll be using that again one day for some kind of a project. Uh, but right now it's just sitting in my garage. But yeah, that's yeah there, there's another there's another good tip. Just like you're uh, just just like you were saying, change one thing at a time. If you build something new, try everything uh, one bit at a time uh, because you you slap something together completely from scratch. And and lo and behold, if it's three of the parts are broken, you think you think it's only one and. It's just multiple uh, uh, errors causing the uh, the issue. Yeah, uh, I just I was reading something and it made me think of something. Um, yeah, another point I want to make about, and I, I'm not trying to beat up on Barry, but because uh, I, I, I say this all the time anyway. When you get a machine, it doesn't matter what machine, you know. But if it's a DIY type machine, like a garage works or a gatton do me a favor build a thing and you know now this is if you're a complete noob i'm talking you know you, this is your first cnc build a thing get mach 3 or uc cnc whatever you're going to use put in your settings to get it to work and you know get your jog in the right direction then learn to play with it. You know, you don't need limit switches and touch plates and all that stuff. They're nice to have. But when you start trying to put all that stuff on your machine and you don't even know how to run the thing yet, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for a bunch of headaches. I ran this Sidewinder machine even up until the day I took it apart. It didn't have any limit switches on it. Well, I did add a touch plate, I guess, uh, later. But, I mean, I ran it for years using a piece of paper and a knob turning on it and uh, no drag chain, no nothing. I mean, I was just as bare bones as you can get. And I love that machine. There's no way. you Nobody out here has got enough money to buy that machine from because I guarantee I could slap that thing back together. I love that thing. It's, you know, it's kind of what got me started into this um and i wouldn't i wouldn't trade that thing for the world but any other questions sean says that's not oh, that must not he's, he's he was asking if if uh i don't know if he's confused or what but he was asking he was asking if it was a xylot if that's josh, not the xylotex josh uh, t josh t Stop looking and run like the wind in the other direction. <laughs> he says he's yeah. looking at longs. I wasn't going to mention their name, but that's the name of the company. And they were crap. Yep. Uh, they're yep. cheap, but they're, there's, there's a reason they're cheap. So. Hey, Tim, how are you? That's, that's where I got them, a company called Longs. So I would advise you. You might get lucky, but. Yeah. You're running every every controller you you have now connected to your machines is a Xylotech, right? That's correct. I have yeah. 
Well, actually, I've got I've got I got that newest Xylotex, the one that's not in the white box, and I don't even have it to a machine, so I've got an extra. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But as I as I was mentioning about that garage works, I'm probably gonna make somebody a sweet deal. It'll be a ready to run thing. It'll have the Xylotex, uh, you know, everything. In fact, I'll probably well, I don't know. I may just make another board similar to that, mount everything on there. You'll have the breakout board, the Xylotex box, uh, drag chain, limit switches. Well, I use them for homing switches. You could use them for positive limit switches. Uh, what else? Uh, E-stop, uh, touch plate. I mean, all that. It'll be it'll be where you could pick it up, set it down, turn it on, and run it. Assuming you have Mach 3 ready to go. Nice. Mm-hmm. I had somebody the other day, too. It's kind of funny. Somebody the other day says, I don't know what's going on. I'm running Mach 3, and every time it gets to 500 lines, it stops. I'm like, <laughs> buy the, the, <laughs> yeah, buy the license. <laughs> you buy uh, the spe- license. Sp- speaking of licenses, Grant was asking if you upgraded yours to version 9 yet. Do, do Say what now? Uh, sorry, V-Carve, V-Carve Pro. So version nine, or are you still at eight point five? I think you have version nine, don't you? Yeah, or? I'm on. I'm on nine. You're on nine. Yeah, I'm. I'm still on eight and a half. I've been very comfortable, but then again, I'm. I have Aspire, so. It's a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's a I'm, bigger cost to upgrade. I'm on nine now. I haven't checked to see if they've had an update lately. Yeah, actually, because you know, actually, it's nine point something. There's been, right. I think. Well, to my knowledge, I think there's been three patches since the regular nine. And, you know, I just, when I know about them, I get them and get them all updated. But, uh, okay, man, we're way over. Any other questions? Uh, Oh, Giles is uh, talking about his uh, 6090. Uh, Chinese CNC. Well, don't get us started on Chinese CNCs. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, uh, if, if, if uh, yeah, Giles. I mean, my only suggestion, because I mean, we're we're very strong in the in the Gatton and garage work circles, but as far as configuring your your Chinese machine, well, that's another reason yeah, why and- why I bought a Gatton because uh, with, with because of all the support. Um, and getting, those getting those back to have my, zero support, and yeah, getting back to go the out there there. earlier about you know when you when you're getting help from somebody, make sure they know what the heck they're doing. Uh, that also goes for uh, you know when you try to help somebody, you know you got you know when people ask me for help. And I go, well, what, you know, cause I don't recognize the name and then they go, well, I got a ABC machine or whatever. I don't know, whatever. I usually say, you know, don't ask me, go to you, go to their tech support. That's, you know, I don't know anything yeah. about those machines or, you know, I yeah. may know something, but I'm, I'm not going to, oh, I was trying to come here. Let's see. Mine says I'm at version. Yep. 9.008, I guess is what it is. I guess that's the latest one. Uh, but yeah, it's not that I don't want to help people, but I don't want to screw them up. Yeah. And if I don't know anything and I'm not going to spend the time, especially if it, you know, if you bought, if you paid, I had a guy who will remain nameless, but he messaged me one time and was wanting me to help him with his thing. And I'm like, that name don't even sound familiar. And I said, well, what kind of machine you got? And he told me, and I'm like, dude, call their tech support. Cause I went and looked up the type of machine he had and he spent like five grand for it. And I'm like, what are you asking me for? You know, <laughs> you spent five grand on a machine. You can't get any tech support out of them. All I can say is sorry. Should have, should have bought one of these. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Yeah. I guess, uh, Hey Becca, how you doing? Good to see you on here. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, she's been here since the start commenting on my, uh, six hour, uh, 
beard here. Okay. Well, guys, we're running really long. We're, we're down a little. We had 90-something viewers a while ago. We're down to 79. And we had not done a giveaway yet. Mm. What happens when y'all get me talking? We haven't done a giveaway. So we'll see who's uh, who's still who's out there. for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do that right quick. We okay. had, oh, I do want to mention too, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but for those of you who wait to the last minute to send your entry in, it's probably not going to be in tonight's drawing because I start coming out here to get set up. It takes me a little bit to get all this stuff going. I, I can't just snap my fingers and all this is out here because I don't leave all this computer stuff out here in my shop. I have to tote it back and forth because I this is a shop. I work out here. It's dusty and it's a yeah. it's a shop. So it may be tonight. It may be next week. Yeah, Watch so both weeks and find out and an put an extra entry next week just in case. If you've sent me an entry and it was after I already shut my computer off in the house and came out here and started setting up, I'll get it when I open up the email in there and I'll, you'll be for sure in the next one. But you can't wait till the last minute because I, you know, just not going to work that way. All right, let's uh, let me grab this computer. I want to get the stop clock thing going. Unless, of course, y'all don't want to do a giveaway. We don't have to. <laughs> hey, Leo's wait. Hot dog. <laughs> let's see if lightning can strike twice, Leo. I felt bad for you, buddy. I really did. Oh, that's not the right thing. Okay, stopwatch. No, timer. There it is. Okay, so I got that set up ready to go. Scott Wilson was asking how you enter. Uh, go to davegatton.com, and you'll see a, a, a – uh, go to Dave's website. That's davegatton.com. There's a link. Uh I'll put a link right here. Okay, let's see. I got the CSC. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we've got forty four. I think we had 43 last week. We got 44 people that are entered in this week's drawing. So let me go to my trusty. Uh, let's see here. Ah. Okay, let's see. This open. Somewhere here it is, random.org. All right, let me see if I can get a drum roll going. So, was everybody were they okay with doing another drawing, or do they want to hold it till next? I, I think I think they are. I think they are. Okay, so I said one to forty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Great sound. All right. So yeah, anyway, got you covered. Go. Good luck, everybody. Let's see what the first number that generates is. And the first number is 27. So let's go back down here to... 20. Congratulations, number 27. <laughs> Whoever you are. Okay. Number 27, and I'm about to start the clock here, is Kevin Muir. M-E-U-R-E-R. -E -E -R. From, looks like Ankeny, Ohio. Somewhere in Ohio. Kevin, you have a minute, well, about a minute 10 now to post a comment in the, uh, see if I can get that back up. So we're doing the clicking sock talk to some. There we go. Yep, Kevin. Yeah, you got it spelled right, Hobby. Thank you for putting that in there. Troy says, haven't been 27 in a long time. Well, neither have I. <laughs> I've fact, got it's a, been uh, over 27 years since I've been 27. 
You got a clicking, uh, uh, t uh, t ticking clock sound effects. Uh, there he is. He's there. Hey. All right. Congratulations, hey. Kevin. Made it with 30 seconds to spare. All righty then. Well, thank you uh, very much for hearing, Kevin. Uh, congratulations. I will. I've got I've got to get some kits cut. I haven't. I've, like I said, the jury duty got me behind. And then uh, Dave Mack, who was our winner last year or last year, last week, he's in the middle of closing a house. And he says, well, maybe it might be better to wait for you to send it. So I thought, OK, well, I haven't even cut his yet. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of them to cut. I'll probably be cutting them. Uh, well, maybe cut them tomorrow. If not, uh, cut them Monday for sure. And then get them sent out by the middle of the week, probably. So, congratulations, Kevin. You are tonight's winner. Uh, I hope everybody is enjoying these these giveaways. Uh, I hope. Well, I hope you're enjoying the show. I hope the giveaways isn't the only reason you're you're coming. But uh, they do make it kind of kind of fun. And, Always a good show. So, all right, well, I guess we're going to get out of here now if I can get this stupid computer thing to work right. Why, that's not. There we go. All right, so before I, since we're already over anyway, uh, let me ask one more time. Oh, I didn't mess that up. Uh, I guess everybody's okay with doing a, the question answer type format most of the time, and then we'll uh, do uh, show and tell every now and then, and a guest every now and then. We'll show and tell, maybe probably once a month is good enough for the show and tell. Uh, like I said, if you know, if, when I say Q and A, rather than just ask a bunch of because when you do Q and A, sometimes you get questions all over the map. So I'd rather try to keep them focused on a certain, you know, topic if we can, kind of, sorta. So if you've got something, you know, like say, say you want to know about laser. I mean, I've done shows where I talk about my laser settings and stuff. Uh, now, you know, I could actually have it run because you know, laser's quiet, so. And plus, y'all would get to see me wear those really cool glasses. Um, so we could do something like that. Um, we can, I mean, we can cut. It's not like we can't cut stuff. I can always mute myself. You know, as long, I don't want to cut something. It don't take 45 minutes to cut. But, uh, you know, we can do some, some things like that. Maybe show. Uh, I've actually done a video on uh, my method of calibrating the machine uh, you know and maybe that might be something somebody might want to want to see that uh so anyway we'll go with that then of course next uh saturday is the first saturday of the month which is when we would normally do the q a anyway so uh i will be out of town next week uh dave uh Doing the, uh, what in the world am I doing? Something with my wife somewhere. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, we're going out. <laughs> um, so uh, I will see you in, I will see everyone in a couple of weeks. Okay. Which will be the first week of my show following Dave, immediately uh, following uh, Dave's show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Barry, I see you out there. You're very welcome. I hope that. We've got some of your question answered uh, about stuff. And like I said, it's it's not to keep harping on this, but it's so much easier when you don't have limit switches because you just drive the machine to wherever you want to start on your material and you hit reference all home and everything's zero and that's it. But when you have homing switches, you hit reference all home, the machine zeros, but then when you move it to the spot you want to start, you got to tell it again to zero out the individual buttons. So you got to remember to do that. And I'm pretty sure from what you described, it sounds like 
you were missing that step and uh, that's why I was cutting off the material, not starting where you thought it was supposed to start. All right, well, we're going to get out of here. Uh, thanks, Javi, for sitting in with me tonight and helping me monitor the chat. Thanks for having me, Dave. And we will see you all next week. Again, congratulations to Kevin Muir. Uh, don't forget, you got to be watching to win, folks. Everybody Night have all. a great weekend. We'll talk to you later.